<laughs> Welcome back guys. Uh, this is episode 11 of Life After Prep. And oh my gosh, I was sitting here and I'm like, hey, what do I talk about? <sighs> I feel like I haven't done much this week, but I started to think about it and I've actually had a few breakthrough moments. So I thought perhaps I can share that with you. So um, last week was uh, a very open, very transparent uh, update. Uh, I talked to you guys about, I guess, my epic mini cut fail and, you know, some of the challenges that I had, um, you know, with regards to dieting so soon after my last contest prep uh, and the challenges, I guess, that I have faced kind of since then and up to this point. So last week we kind of, I put my big girl pants on and was like, all right, well, <sighs> mini cut wasn't probably the right thing to do now. So let's get back on the reverse diet um, bandwagon. So I guess the intention for me right now is to kind of suck it up, just deal with a little bit of weight gain um, since my show and just keep progressing and think about, you know, the long game. So um, I was kind of deciding this week whether or not I was going to increase my calories and I think I really should. Uh, I kind of looked at it relatively objectively and imagined what I might say to a client of mine and uh, this is probably the right decision it's not what I really want um, because you know we all have those struggles those inner dialogues with ourselves about how we look uh, our self-image you know when you've seen yourself and an incredibly lean um, you know shape it's it's really hard to see that uh, you're losing that but at the same time Something that I did notice this week, just as of this last week, I've taken out all of my uh, high intensity cardio. My gosh, I feel like my strength and my energy levels have improved significantly. And I tried to kind of think back to how I was feeling when I was trying to maintain uh, a lot of my high intensity interval training. And um, in addition to the physiological effect that it had on my ability to recover from my training, it was also incredibly like mentally draining. So I think that this, you know, the past couple of weeks, not having access to the gym uh, and my normal kind of hit style of workout. Um, and I would often interchange that with either the Stairmaster, which has always been a go-to. It's kind of mindless. It's easy. I don't have to think or plan. I can just get on there, <laughs> ramp it up and just go for it and sweat a bunch. Uh, but I also really enjoy my spin classes. Um, and then doing kind of hit style workouts with a bunch of different equipment. So kettlebells, slam balls, um, I guess battle ropes, anything plyometric, you know, a combination of those for different interval um, and recovery um, and different recoveries. So not having that, I've kind of just gone, oh, well, I guess we'll just uh, phase this out, which is what I needed. I thought about like the amount of time that I was committing and it doesn't sound like a lot. So I was doing two 45 minute sessions um, kind of for the most of February uh, in addition to my five resistance training and then I was also trying to achieve my 10,000 steps per day because I am quite inactive at what I do um, and it was just kind of exhausting it really was and yeah this this last week I kind of was thinking about why I was starting to feel more positive and I think a few like Lane had noticed a couple of other people that we kind of see on a day-to-day -day basis for work um, have said, oh, you can see a bit of an improvement in your persona and your mood. And I was like, why is that? And in addition to, you know, starting work with um, the psych last week, and I'm actually going to be having my second um, session this week uh, with this new therapist, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I was like, well, that's not it. That's not, that's not the only reason. But um, yes, I think I've had a bit of a mind shift, a mindset shift. So, you know, I've kind of gone, well, here we are. This is where I'm at at the moment physically. There's not really much I can do about it. I don't think the, well, the amount of effort that would be required to kind of get back to where I was um, would require another really almighty effort. And it's not, I thought about it, and it's not really my priority. Like, we were out on the boat the other day. On the weekend we had the kids and um, there's just no one around for days. It's like still water, the sun is out, it's just beautiful. We've got like lunch um, packed for the day. We're going out to like a, you know, a nice isolated you know, location and it's just us and we had our nanny with us as well. And I was thinking to myself like, 
right now I feel completely free. Like just not a single thing was running through my mind when it came to like my body composition or my training. And I was like, God, I wish I could have this more. Um, you know, and I think when you are constantly kind of surrounded with uh, competitors and um, people that are in fitness and people that are competing and you kind of are seeing that all the time, um, it does put a lot of pressure on you. And uh, I think kind of just taking a step back from that on the weekend, and we've been out on the boat a few weekends now because it's coming out nicer weather, of course, moving into summer, or well, it's actually spring here, but it feels like summer, it's that frigging hot. Yeah, and I guess we've been doing a little bit more like boating and just being out in the nature. <laughs> um, and I completely just forgot about it. And I was like, oh, maybe that's why I'm feeling good. So I think that was a bit of a breakthrough moment for me. It's happened twice now. And it's really helped my, mind, my mindset when I've been kind of in the gym training. And, you know, outside of seeing, um, you know, my HIIT training decrease, that has also um, played a big part in a positive way in how I've been recovering from my resistance training sessions. So yes, we've been um, training at home. Um, we do have a great home setup. So I've still been able to do quite a bit of like heavy loaded lifting. So my deadlifts, trap bar deadlifts, squats, you know, hip thrusts, I can still do all that because we have all of the weight plates. Um, but I have felt so strong and I can see, it's almost like an, an immediate change. I have seen the amount of improvement in my uh, body composition. I think just because I haven't had all of this, you know, high intensity interval training interfering with that recovery uh, and then also my energy levels in training and also the uh, psychological, my mentality, my approach to those training bouts. Like I've been able to go in and actually really focus because I'm not thinking or dreading the fact that, oh, I've still got to do like some more HIIT training. So I think it's had a, um, a myriad of different positive effects by taking all of that out. So yeah, I was saying to Lane this morning, it's like, yes, I think I'm actually seeing some positive like muscle like hypertrophy already just since, since taking that out. I know it sounds crazy, um, but you know, I have been, I can see what my body is doing and I have watched myself change over the years. And yeah, I think it was kind of what the turning point that I needed. So. That being said, I think um, if you are somebody that has kind of been in a similar position where you've been super shredded, really, really lean, um, I think hopefully you get to a point where you can have that feeling that I had like the other weekend. It was like, oh, this is so liberating. I'm not thinking about it at all. It's amazing. So freeing. And now it's not really, you know, of course I have the desire to get back to that again, but now my focus has kind of shifted to, okay, well, Let's work on building some more muscle. We know that, you know, legs, lower body, quads has been my focus. And um, that's what I'm going to do until I decide to compete again. So um, I don't know whether, like, I've been toying with the idea of competing again this year. And one of the pressures, I guess, of being, um, uh, you know, a professional athlete and in the WBFF organization is that you do need to compete yearly, um, one show per year at least, to uphold that stature. And... Um, yeah, I feel like I, I know how much effort I had to put in to kind of get there. And then if I don't compete this year, then it's gone again and I have to go back to amateurs. So I've actually contacted the guys today and just asked, you know, with everything that's going on, like how strict and how rigid are you holding that requirement for athletes just given the circumstances of, you know, um, the globe at the moment. So I'll be curious to and very interested to see how um, they're going to handle that. I would like to compete again, but I just know that it's not necessarily the best thing for um, my body, like from a physiological standpoint, from a hormonal standpoint, like it's taken me eight months to get my menstrual cycle back. And who knows if I get it again regularly this month, I might skip it again, I don't know. But I think based on my body composition, at the moment, I think I'm probably back to that, you know, healthy uh, body weight that would enable me to get my cycle again. And a few people have been like, oh, family planning, <laughs> have you considered having kids? So there's so many things to um, 
think about and like structure in my mind. And I'm also very business focused. So it's like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I really don't. I have no idea. So, hey, if you guys have suggestions, <laughs> give me some, give me some thoughts, <laughs> give me some help. But anyway, um, I guess I'll wrap this up. But I think this past week we had, a, we've had a great week of training. Uh, like I said, awesome sessions without all of the cardio kind of intervening, not only from the recovery, but the um, psychological, um, I guess, demotivation. And it was just, I wasn't enjoying my workouts because I felt like I was just occupied with so much time in the gym and having to exercise. So um, that was really good. But this weekend we also did early Easter for the kids. So uh, we went out on the boat. Um, We have them this weekend and we don't have them um, next weekend when we have Easter. So um, we thought we'd do it early. So Easter Bunny came this weekend. We did a big uh, Easter egg hunt and uh, did some cooking with the kids on Sunday morning. And uh, we'll quickly run over my macros for the weekend. (laughs) And you will see, it's like, ah, just like clockwork. Do so well during the week. Focused, tasks, things I've got to do. Activity, no problems. Weekend rolls around and it's like, okay, you have time where your mind is thinking other things, you've got distractions, you've got surplus, clutter, mess, uh, and that just stresses me out a lot. And um, I had a couple of moments, I think, this weekend where uh, I made some really big improvements in my behavior. And one of them was usually if I am feeling stressed, um, I will acknowledge that emotion and that feeling, but I won't necessarily, um, I guess, voice it to anybody else. And of course, then, you know, it can lead to that um, emotional um, overeating and overconsumption. But this weekend, um, I actually said to to Lane for the first time, um, hey, babe, just so you know, there is a whole bunch of things in the cupboard that I think could potentially cause some trouble. And I've never done that before. Like I've always just kind of thought about it, thought about it, it's in my mind. No one else has any idea what's going on in there. I'm having this big stress party in my head and I'm like, ooh, cool, calm, collected on the outside. Inside I'm like, ah, there's a whole tub of peanut butter in my cupboard right now and I can't handle it. So yeah, I actually told him about that. And he was like, you know, I'm really proud of you for doing that because previously, it would have just stayed there. No one would know otherwise. And then you'd probably eat, uh, you know, a good, I don't know, 200 grams of peanut butter. And then that's your day done. So yeah, that was a big um, step in the right direction for me. And I feel like that was very empowering. And then there have been like follow-up situations where that thing, that has happened again. And I've been like, okay, you need to get it out. And you need to tell somebody, otherwise you're going to do the same sabotaging act that you always do. So that was a big win for me. Um, And it happened on a few occasions this weekend, which was awesome. I still made mistakes this weekend. Um, We had like a whole bunch of Easter eggs around um, because we did stuff for the kids, which they had so much fun. But anyway, I was making breakfast with Livia and then I had to do a bit of work and she's sitting there opening up all her eggs and she's like, try this one. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) She opens the one. Try this one. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I must have like, oh, I don't know. I can't think. But I, I tracked it as best as I could. You'll see when we have a look at my data. But I just I was like mindlessly. Well, not mindlessly. It was a, it was intentional. But I was like, oh, I can't say no to her. <laughs> She's like trying to feed me. That's like an act of love. I didn't do things perfectly this week. But I certainly feel like I made a massive improvement on, you know, handling that situation. And also not let, letting myself ruminate on it for a too long or a period afterwards. So I kind of said to Lane, oh yeah, well, I've just downed a thousand calories uh, and it's not even 10 a.m. Do you feel like going for a bike ride later? So rather than kind of stressing about it, letting it worry, worry me, um, yeah, we just kind of took the kids out, went for a bike ride in the afternoon. We bought them a um, trundle for Easter so we could take them for a ride and their bikes are coming next week. New bicycles for the kids. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I think that was a really positive step in the right direction for me in so far as not just flipping the fuck out um, and kind of getting on with it. So, yeah, I feel like things are progressing in the right direction. 
So anyway, let's go and have a look at my macros and I'll tell you what I'm going to do for this week uh, as we move into, uh, I think it's about week 16 of my actual reverse diet. So striving to increase calories. So uh, we'll see where we're at. All right. So um, it was, it's been 18 weeks since I uh, finished my show. It's crazy. And uh, yeah, so this was week 15, I guess, of an actual reverse because three of those weeks were attempted mini cuts. <laughs> Fail. So last week I started, I kind of did a bit of a reset and just wanted to have um, something that was a little bit more manageable for me to adhere to. So um, we took my calories up uh, by a little bit. My goal, if you can look here on the screen that I'm highlighting, so I was going to have two high days for the weekend um, with 185 and 60 uh, fats and then uh, five lower days. So um, 145 and 45 uh, during the week, which honestly is pretty easy for me to stick to when I have a lot of stuff kind of going on. And literally I'm getting home at like 8.30 at night most nights. And when I get home, I put everything down and I don't think about anything else. And I just like relax. <laughs> that was something that I never used to do. So um, you can see here, uh, I actually was pretty low on compliance um, to my protein. I think um, if I, memory serves, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I think I might have forgotten to put in my evening meal because there's no way I only ate 96 grams of protein. And I went back and checked my tracker um, and yeah, it said 96. I'm like, nah, that's not right. <laughs> so I think I forgot to log my dinner. So my compliance is probably uh, a little bit better than what it's saying here. So if I hypothetically, let's go and change this. So let's say I actually hit my target of 145 and 145 here, then I was dead on. So I'll just move those back just in case. Um, carbs overall were a little high um, compared to the target and uh, my fats were actually a little low, but overall they balanced out. So you can see here um, my overall coverage, coverage? <laughs> my overall average calories were 1620 and my target was 1630. So pretty much dead on, but I did want to show you something that was super interesting. And this is uh, the weekend um, of boating, ch children, kids, uh, kind of just chilling out and relaxing and having that uh, lovely uh, freeing moment where I was like, I don't care about what I look like right now. And this is the mindset I need to apply every day. So I'm happier because happy is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I had 2300 calories and I guess like by the time we even finished breakfast, I'd already downed literally like 200 grams of carbs and probably 50 fats. And I was like, ah, oh, Lane, did you see me eat that? That was your amazing daughter just feeding me. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, throw them back chocolate Easter eggs. So yeah, I made a bit of a boo-boo, but, um, look at my weight. So I was 66.2. I took one weight during the week. Um, it has been a... Uh, less of a focus for me um, in the last couple of weeks because I don't enjoy the number. Um, so I've been trying to kind of get a weight or two if I can, if I remember to do it um, and just focus more about, okay, how was my performance today at the gym? How was my energy today at the gym? How was my strength? Did I do okay? So, um, you know, those are the kinds of things that I'm trying to focus on um, rather than the negative um, of my weight. Um, so that's why my compliance, I guess, taking weight has decreased. It's kind of intentional. Um, but after that one high day, if I just took one weigh in and weighed in after that day, I'm at 67.5. That could have just thrown me off. But thankfully, uh, I kind of logicked my way through it. And something else to consider as well was if you look here, like I was pretty consistent with my fiber intakes all week. And then on the weekend, some of this 203 on Saturday um, is from some alcohol. So we had a couple of drinks on the boat. Um, or when we got off on the, on the boat and we're laying down on the sand. So, um, yeah, like some of that's alcohol. So my fiber was really low. So going from normal, 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 normal to like no fiber for me, I don't think I went to the toilet on from like Saturday morning through to Monday after I'd weighed in. So part of that um, weight spike is absolutely due to the fact that I had really low fiber. So, you know, you've got things moving through nice and um, I guess consistently and then you stop, then your GI kind of slows down too. So um, 
yeah, I I was not feeling very good on Monday morning when I woke up. Not only was I kind of feeling very, you know, fluidy, um, you know, my muscles were really tight, like I could feel it in my legs because I had so many carbohydrates and then you've got all that water moving uh, inside your cells. But then also feeling backed up and like not having eaten enough uh, fiber was kind of all things going in the wrong direction. So I, you know, I really had to be mindful on Monday, you know, and be positive because I could have looked at that and just gone, throw my hands up in the air and had a really bad day and let it affect me. But I was like, you know what, nah, just going to get in. I didn't do my squats uh, on Monday like I was planning. I actually swapped uh, my squats out for hip thrusts because my belt would not have felt comfortable and I would have had a terrible squat session. So it made some adjustments to my training to accommodate how I was feeling. Uh, and all my accessory exercises were really good. Um, and, you know, I'll throw in my lower body squats uh, probably later in the week when I've had a bit more time to get back and be consistent with my fiber intakes uh, and hit my calories. So, yeah, that was the week. So uh, moving on to this current week, uh, I am going to um, do the right thing and continue reversing. So I'm going to take my calories up. So um, we'll do like 160 as an average for my uh, carbs this week and probably 50, you know what, 52. I'm going to go 165. So 17 or 8. So they're really starting to push those carbohydrates back in. Um, I prefer carbohydrates. That's why I've made that slight increase more in favor of carbs uh, than fats because I don't really eat a lot of dietary fats uh, unless it's uh, Easter eggs and chocolate, <laughs> which is not normal for me. So yeah, that's going to be the plan, I guess, for this week. Again, I'll probably do some calorie cycling. Uh, I'll go slightly lower uh, in the week and then I'll have a couple of higher days on the weekend. Um, but obviously this weekend there will be uh, no temptations for Easter eggs. And um, hopefully can practice a little bit more of the strategies and the techniques that I go over on Thursday uh, with the psychologist. So I'm really pumped for that. Um, and happy to start kind of making um, some improvements uh, in that area of my life. So, yeah. So, guys, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this uh, valuable. Hopefully you can apply some of these, um, I guess, emotions or feelings, these changes um, to your own situation and um, grow as a person. <laughs> I know I got a lot of positive um comments last week from people saying, you know, that they appreciate the uh, transparency and the openness about, you know, things not always going to plan and being super easy. So yeah, hopefully uh, the things that have happened to me this week, um, some of the situations with the hit cardio, the exercise, the training, um, you might be able to relate to that and um, apply some of those changes to your situation and see if you do feel um, the positive effects, I guess, of reducing all the cardio and making some of those kind of positive changes. Have a great week, guys. Enjoy quarantine. We're still in quarantine until like May. So we still have quite a few weeks ahead of us, but um, I guess we're all in this together and uh, I will see you at my next update.